<laughs> Quick notes. This is SMU's third appearance in the WNIT in the last five seasons. Uh, in 2014, SMU went 1-1, one one, beating Texas Southern at home before losing to Minnesota. Um, so 2-3 and three in the WNIT, or 2-1 and one in the last three WNIT games. Obviously, Alicia Froling's 17th double-double of the season, uh, 36th career double-double, too shy of matching the program record. Um, nice. And with that, we'll turn it over to Coach for an opening statement. And uh, then we'll go to questions. Uh, I would say, what a war. It was a, it was a war tonight. It was physical. Uh, they wounded about four of our players, but we went back and <laughs> got went to the bench and, and they fought. I mean, I'm, I'm making light of that, but every one of our players knew that it was going to be a war, but I think they were all prepared. Our bench showed up tonight, and we're fortunate to get this win and to survive in advance. Three of your four bigs fell out, although Deja in the last couple seconds. And in the first half, you had five field goals. If, if you'd been told that before the game, would you have thought there's any chance you're sitting here talking about a victory? No, because, well, yes and no. Yes, because I, I don't think there's any quit in, the, in the, these Mustangs. Uh, Moody Magic is real. Uh, you can say what you want. I think we gave them every bit of confidence. We couldn't have given them any more confidence than they had. We started out slow, as you said. We only had five field goals. We gave up five threes in the first half. Uh, wasn't playing well, wasn't playing consistent, was fouling. When in the second half came out, they gave up a valid fight. We just continued <coughs> to fight, got ourselves in a position to get in overtime, and we won it in overtime. So I'm never going to give up on these young ladies. All right, for Kenzie and, and Alicia, why was the offense struggling in the first half? What was La Tech doing defensively, or what was out of sync for your offense? I don't know, I just don't think we, I think maybe we came out just not totally ready. I don't know why, I don't know, I'm sure Coach is going to go over film sure. with us about that. Yes, we are sure. Um, I mean, luckily we turned around the second half, but yeah, I, I don't have an answer. I think, uh, like Coach said, he told us multiple times that postseason is just a whole different monster, and a lot of us haven't been to postseason, so I don't think we understood it until we were in it. Um, I don't know if LaTeX been to postseason or whatever, but I just, there was no flow when we started. Um, we weren't moving the ball very well. We just weren't working very well together. And I think it finally clicked like, oh, we got to come to play if we want to keep playing. So. Yeah, they're not going to hand it to yeah. us. All right, he said the postseason's a different monster. Now you guys have done it. How did it feel different? What was different about today from regular season? I think at halftime, we just realized like, <coughs> we have 20 minutes left of this game and it could be for our seniors it could be their last 20 minutes of college basketball so i think that's the big difference it's do or die and i think that you can say that but once not until you're in the game do you realize like this could be my last game for the season so i think that was mm -hmm. the biggest thing and then also i think everybody comes out to play so much harder in postseason play it's not like oh okay well we can just win the next game it's no we're winning this game because we want to advance Coach, have you ever been around a game, either as a player or a coach, where you could go an entire half and every field goal was from outside the three-point line? And at any point, did you sort of abandon the inside game in the first half and just tell them to shoot all long range? Absolutely rank? not. They abandoned, they abandoned the inside game. No, they, they knew what the game plan was. It, 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 it's fun to watch, but I think Alicia couldn't have said it any better. If you hadn't experienced it, you don't understand the level of intensity the sense of urgency that everybody plays with. Uh, I think when you ex experience is the best teacher right now, and I'm just glad we were able to advance while we experience it. So the next game we won't get caught by surprise mm -hmm. and know that uh, our next opponent will be coming in here to do the exact same thing that mm -hmm. LaTeX did. So hopefully we'll have a few shields <laughs> up, a few rifles, you know, <laughs> and, we, and we'll be ready. When you have to grind through a game like this and you're trailing for much of the game, obviously 28 points in a double-double, Alicia did a lot of good things, but how significant was that 40-foot three-pointer that <laughs> she banged in off the glass to, to close the margin to 54-47? Uh, well, I think it was extremely fun for the fans. I, I think they really enjoyed it, but I'm going to tell you, in, in postseason, every basket can give you momentum. 
Every three-pointer can give, every foul can give you momentum. You just don't know which one of those three-pointers, those fouls, or missed assignments will make the difference in the game. And that's what I've been trying to explain to them. And we experienced that sitting watching the men play today. I think mm -hmm. Kenzie and I was, was discussing that, and, and she understands the importance of the possession game. And we fought and fought and fought to the end. And as I said earlier, gave us a chance to go into overtime. And if we don't do that, I mean, there's no, there's no die in these, in these young ladies, and, and I'm extremely proud of them. Kenzie, what did that do for you and the rest of your teammates? It was Alicia's first three of the year, <laughs> and it got it got the game back to within shouting distance, pulled you to within seven at the end of the third. Did that give the rest of you some kind of a lift? So much energy, and I think Alicia brings a lot of energy anyway, but just seeing her excitement, and I think she does a really good job of like calming us down and bringing energy when we need it, and that was what we needed at that time. I'm smiling. I wish Alicia would do something to calm me down. She calm y'all down? <laughs> she gets me fired up. <laughs> With the offense sort of stuck in first gear a little bit in the first half, what was the conversation like at halftime? What adjustments did you all make? Well, it was, it was a lot like uh, Alicia mentioned. I talked to him about that, I, that me as a coach, I'm not ready to go home. I'm not ready to shut it down. I don't know why you're playing as if you're ready to go home. I'm not. Go out there and play the way you're capable of playing. Uh, but the thing is, I think by the third quarter, we'll put ourselves in a good position, but it didn't happen in the third quarter. We ended the third quarter, we were down five or six. But uh, I looked in their eyes and told them, we're just going to continue to fight one possession at a time, put ourselves in position. We could have won it in regulation if Alicia would have listened to me, but she didn't. She put the ball on the floor once again. No, I'm telling I'm going to tell it, Alicia. No. We had a chance to win it right there on the baseline. She missed the shot. The kid didn't foul. So, we was in the best position to have a chance to win it. But if we don't win it right there, we're going to overtime. So, As you and your staff are teaching this team to win, do you need a game like this where you get behind and you grind and things no. aren't necessarily working well, <laughs> but you find a way to win anyway? It's definitely a character-building game. But no, I don't want any more of these where we get down by 14 um, in a surviving advance. I, knew, I know that they're going to fight. I don't want them to fight. I just want them to go out there and, and be on attack. I want them to be confident. We played as if we wasn't sure how we should come out and, and, and establish ourselves. And it looked like La Tech came in and they were trying to establish something. And, and it looked like they wanted to build their program quicker than we wanted to build the culture of our program when we landed. But we fought. And that's what we've been working on. You come back from down 12 or whatever it was. What's the conversation like in the huddle going into overtime? either from the coaches or from the players? Right then we said that that was our game. Like we made it to that point, we fought back, we're not going to lose a movie. That's, that's just not what we do. So I think we were, we were set, like, okay, we're done playing with them, let's go ahead and finish it. Yeah, I think as soon as we went to overtime, like, it's like we just knew that we were going to win. Like, I mean, we still had to do the work, but we knew that no matter what was going to happen. I wish somebody would have told me. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to do, I wish. <laughs> All right, so how did that confidence change, or did it change, when Alicia fouled out? I, I, I was panicked a little, <laughs> but because um, I think we've, we've lived on six or seven people for so long, and then, but our bench came in so huge today, mm -hmm. and I, I don't want to overlook that because I, we couldn't have done it without them at all. Obviously, we need Alicia in there, but I think a lot of people stepped up in a big way to pick Alicia up when we needed to. Yeah, I mean, I was frustrated when it happened, but I just, like I said before, there was something inside me that I said, you know what, it's, I feel like we still have this. And, I mean, our bench stepped up, they were awesome, they finished it, so. When you have a game like this where you expend so much energy and so much emotion to scrap all the way back and tie it up and win in overtime, what's the key to bouncing back Monday not just getting your legs back under you, but getting the emotion and the energy back. Oh, yeah, I think the energy and the emotion is there. We're going to ride this way. We're in the postseason. I mean, the key is rest. They cannot go dancing. They can't go walking around the mall. They need to just sit and watch the tournament on TV. And What's wrong? No, I'm, I'm listening. Go yes, ahead. That's, 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 that's what we need to do. I, I'm thinking about right now relaxing or just giving them completely off tomorrow because I know how important the game is. Oh, don't look at me like that. I'm thinking about it. I didn't say I was going to do it. <laughs> okay, and we're going to um, hopefully come back fresh. 
uh, and hopefully your movie will be packed. We go, I mean, can y'all put that out there? We want to sell our movie. So yeah. if you're hearing this interview, we want you in, in Moody on Monday night. 